Hello there everyone, this is I am Mark 3 and welcome and or welcome back to Starship Corporation. This is the first of four parts for this particular mini-series or it is the second of five if you decided to partake of the hour and a half video where I went through the tutorials and learned how to play the game in preparation before starting this particular video set. So. This is either part one or part two, depending on your perspective. And enjoy the headache that that might cause. Mm. <laughs> anyway. Right, Starship Corporation. It's a game I've had for a while. Um, since early alpha, actually. And it's been updated and gone through several iterations since then. It released to um, very, very small notice last week, actually, as of the time of recording. And for some reason, it's only got 10 reviews, so basically no one's really cared. And of those 10 reviews, only two of them were actually positive. So it's got a mostly a negative rating as of the time of recording. So I was kind of curious as to why, which is why I picked it for this week's mini-series. It's also why I played the tutorials first to um, see how they held up and see if I thought I could do a mini-series with it or not. I think I can, so we are going to see what we are going to see because we have seen for seen. Whatever. <laughs> anyway, Starship Corporation is basically a game where you are in charge of your own corporation, where you are designing and building spaceships to operate in the galaxy at large. You can send your ships out to do certain missions if you care to, but the meat of the game is in creating your own ship designs. The other big core component of the game is actually playing through the different ratings missions. Like, every single haul you make, you can then do ratings testings on it to make sure that it's up to spec before you start to sell it to the market, which is an entirely different thing. However, I will not be covering that here in these four parts, most likely, because uh, quite, quite simply, I suck at it. And I, I, I find it kind of clunky. A lot of the negative reviews have said, actually, this game is really clunky. And honestly, I found it not too bad for the most part, except for aforementioned testing rating missions where you try to manage the crew. And I just found it somewhat confusing, so, <laughs> you know. Apart from that, I don't think clunky exactly fits. It's more like, there's too much stuff. Yeah, I think too much stuff is probably a, a fairer description, at least in my eyes. Anyway, enough waffling, let's continue. We will start with the campaign option, because basically the tutorial is in mini campaign by itself. It's the same as everything else. Sandbox is basically the same thing. Campaign is, again, is basically the same thing, but it's got some additional story tacked into it as well, so... The three modes are more or less the same. Tutorial just shows you what to do, and it has a very short limit. Sandbox is go do whatever. Campaign has got a bit of story to it as well. Like, just random messages and things. But they, they're basically the same thing. So, we'll start with campaign. With a new campaign. Yes, I start that. I went poking really quickly between recording the first bit and recording this one. Just to make sure I had an understanding of what I was trying to do. So. My company is Ionian Arms. I am Ion Mark Three. I am male. So we're doing setup. We can't select our uh, logo. I think that's because we're in campaign, actually. Next step. So yeah, here we go. It um, gives you it campaign kind of sets things as we go. So growing up, you were watching your father build up the business, establishing multiple shipyards throughout the galaxy and dealing with many different clients. It seemed to you that he was unstoppable, and everybody knew him. So we got a fair bit of starting capital. Normally, you'd be able to pick your own starting levels, but I think that's the sandbox setting only. So I could choose from d three different settings for each of these. You're old enough to understand the suffering, but too young to know how to help as you witness shipyard after shipyard being destroyed by the War of Independence. When father decided to step down and leave you in charge of the company, your brother became more resentful. Oh dear. Okay, so, Fred Limit, minus 100,000. <laughs> minus 100,000. Jeez. Even, even though ships that were built by the company well before the war are still flying to distant stars today, the company itself was reduced to a single shipyard on Mars. Most of the specialists your father hired were still loyal to the company, and they celebrated your leadership. Yay. 
And can you rebuild what your father once established, learning from his mistakes to take it even further than he ever imagined? The economy is recovering, and the market for interstellar ships is thriving. So, yes, it's kind of got a given a backstory reason for each of the sayings. So, we start with 1 million millibit coins, or is it megabit coins? I'm not sure which, I think megabit. Our credit limit is minus 100,000 megabit, so if we go below the credit limit, we uh, die, basically. It's game over because we go bankrupt. Auto-resolving is easy, that is exactly what I want, because auto-resolve deals with the crew management for ship design testing, kind of thing. And then wind conditions accumulate 5 million megabits, so have five times our current wealth. So, not too bad. The campaign is fairly generous, but you can set much stricter challenges if you so choose. Okay, here we go. Right, so by the way, the game plays in terms of quarters, so it's like every three months is a single turn. And campaign, it gives you FTL messengers. So, here we go from Trevor McCarley, uh, McBarley. Sorry. Let's begin. Location Mars, personal advisor. Dear Mr. Iron Mark III, I am very excited to start our work together. There is a lot to do, and we need to move fast. We have only one salvage vessel left, the Andrea Gale. She has been pressed into war service for a long time, but is still operational. I suggest we put her to use, either by looking for contract work or to rescue some of our own less successful prototypes stranded in space. Kind regards, Trevor McBarley. Thank you. So, yeah. We get some messages and things as well as the whole backstory going on. So, it tells us we've got one ship. We start off with that, but we've already down 2,200 megabit coins because of ship operation and taxes, so we're already losing money. Though, admittedly, it's pretty small right now because we've got a million in the bank. So, it tells us there we've got um, two ships to start out. The Andrea Gale is the one it mentioned, which is a trustworthy salvage vessel that served during the Independence War. Move it up to any stranded ship to reactivate it. Okay. But, we've also got a second ship, if you notice, the Mary Celeste which is actually mentioned in the next quarter. So this is what I was doing. I was just poking at the campaign very lightly to see what was going on. And this is how I figured out this is a shared start because we start with this stuff in the tutorial. We probably start with this stuff in the campaign as well. So we get two ships and we start on Mars in all circumstances. So the Andrea Gale, he said, look for either try something to find something to do or go out for contract work. So, right. We've got Mars, we've got some things we can do here already, just to get started off. We've got the tutorial missions are here as well, which are improved pilot vessel and pilot vessel. Those are two tutorial missions, but they're still here, so we can actually complete them for a little bit of money early on. So we'll get the pilot vessel, which requires zero design, 15 standard operating procedure, 30 ERS and zero HEP. So emergency and hostile are the different ratings of your different designs. And you'll notice that we have our ship design database. We can build these four different ships, one of which is called Tutorial Vessel, because that's the one I did in the tutorial, ha ha ha, which is slightly more expensive than the other variants around there. But we can't build it because we're actually missing some tech since we've restarted. So we can get the designs carried over, but we can't build this one because we've not got an armory or a sick bay in terms of our available technology. So we can't build that one immediately. But we can build the probe or the pilot vessel to supply to this particular contract. I'm going to build the pilot vessel because it is slightly cheaper. And I think that's all that's required. So if we look, da -da -da, it gives you a, a list of statistics and minimum requirements. Like it requires two emergency evacuation rooms installed. Our budget for the ship is 200,000. So yeah, we can spend up to 200,000 on a ship for this particular design. Hmm. Okay, so there, it's a budget. I'm not seeing any competing companies, but we'll probably run into those soon enough. Or at least there were competing companies last time I tried it, last time I tried this game, but that was before we had the whole turn-based mechanic come in, so I don't know if that's there or not. Anyway, pilot vessel, we will build this ship, which will cost us 111 and a half thousand megabit coins. So that's a tenth of our budget already being sunk into the single vessel but that will be built and that will appear next turn 
Um, this is actually a good time for a test because I do not know if we can build multiple things at once at a given shipyard. I suspect not, but this will be my first time trying it. So, let's go ahead and unlock the parts required for the improved equipment for this improved pilot vessel contracts as well. It's also a nice segue into looking into the technology system. So, department, research, and look at all these different rooms we can get. Yeah. So many rooms. This is what I meant by saying it's less clunky, it's more just like so many things. There's just so many things. So, right, we need the sick bay, the basic sick bay. We can give a quarterly budget to research things. It's more efficient than the listed cost if we do it that way, but it just takes time instead. But we have the option of selecting a specific thing and just pressing buy instead. So I'm going to buy it for demonstration purposes. I'm going to buy the sick bay. It costs more than the listed cost though because we have to basically pay someone else to let us crib on their blueprints and stuff like that. So hey, you know how to do it. Okay, we'll let you do it for, we'll do it as well for a nominal fee. In this case, 10,000 extra to the cost. So confirm. And that gives us a sick bay. We also need the armory, which is somewhere. Where was the armory? Yeah, look at all this dance stuff. Armory. Was that under berths? Mm, yeah, there it is. Small army. Yeah, sometimes it's just finding things. That, a search function would be nice. But okay, we've bought those two techs. So we go back to the galaxy map. And we select improved pilot vessel. And oh look, suddenly it's green. And that's because we've got all the techs required to actually build this thing. So there we go. We can actually put these things together for 114 each. The mission... Um, where was it? <laughs> right. It requires a basic sh shuttle model, but also including a sick bay and a small armory. So we've got the budget limits for 130, we're 114. It doesn't say how much we would get from it, but I will try to build it anyway. Ah, okay, yep, it's one per shipyard. Okay, so one one contract can be answered by the shipyard per turn. Good to know. Anyway, there are, however, some other things. Like, we've got one here which is marked clear the ship route, which means we have to clear some asteroid fields to allow trade freighters to operate more freely to act on. However, we don't have a ship that can do this. We've only got the Mary Celeste, which again, we've not yet been introduced to, and the Andre Galal, which is not geared this way because it's a salvage ship. There is, however, a salvage operation listed here. And the Andre Galal actually more than meets the specifications in every respect. So we can assign the ship to this mission. Okay. Then we can remove it from the assignment if we want to, but. Now, when we select the Andrew Galal, we've got a target zone here. So I'll send the ship out this way with its research sensors active, I suppose. So it'll pick up anything else that's on the way. And I'll cheat a little bit and have the Mary Celeste just activate its sensors as well, because, well, you'll find out in a few moments. <laughs> but basically, that is also all we're doing this particular turn. So end the turn. Right, so it takes a few moments to figure out the quarter and crunch its numbers. And then it'll proceed to the next step as soon as it works out what to do. Including our quarterlies, our... Oh, there's something I forgot to do. Never mind, I'll, I'll set that up this turn. Okay. Contract completed. We built the pilot vessel required in the contract. Payment is 20,000 exactly. It doesn't mention payment in the contract, so that's a slight oversight there in terms of the game developer. It doesn't mention how much you'll get for a contract if you finish it. But well, the ship itself is relatively cheap and can do the job. So, deliver. That delivered that. And so, here we go. Another message. Dear Michael, I just want to let you know we have an old mining vessel at our disposal. Position close to a target area, so if you activate the sensor, you should bump into it. If we don't use it, I recommend scrapping it. Um, missed out a little eye there. But Trevor McBarley once again. So, yep, that tells us we've got the other thing, which I already told it to start moving around scouting. So, we're ahead in that regard and behind in another one. But anyway, here's our financials. We fill, fulfilled a contract, so we gained 131,000. We spent 110 of that. We also spent 44,000 on research, which is why we're below the 1 million level right now, but otherwise we'd be slightly up. 
So total balance for the last turn was 26,000 into the red. Not too bad, but it's because I did some extra research and things. So, Mary Celeste, I want you to go mining now. So this ship will start mining in this yellow zone. Yellow zone is a mineable zone, by the way. But as, um, as the advisor said, we could scrap that ship if we wanted to. And our other fellow, the Andrea girl, is flying far, far away to go to the salvage spot that was marked over that way. And they've both got active sensors going, so, you know, they're both trying to sense if anything's going on around them. Now, the next thing we can do, since we already set ourselves up for this, notice, by the way, yellow on the salvage contract means we've, we've taken that one. But we can actually begin work on the improved pilot vessel to get that thing paid out. Does it actually say how much it'll give us? Uh, no, it doesn't really tell us how much it's going to pay us. But I'll start building that ship anyway, so it should give us another 20,000. I wonder if that changes as we go. Probably. Oh, wait, no, it does tell us. <laughs> Duh. It's got a very clear payment down here. So if I go to the salvage operation, I'll get 155 if I succeed at that. Clearing that route of the asteroid fields will be 120,000, which is quite tasty, actually. And then there's food to the Tangian world, which is actually over in the same direction, which requires a cargo ship of some kind. Yeah, 1,200 tons of cargo and three EEVs. All right. Now, the thing I mentioned that I didn't do is research. And I'm going to set that quickly off before ending this particular part. And that's because I want to get some more advanced stuff. In particular, storage. We need cargo bays to do the cargo jobs, oddly enough. But in general, the, the things get bigger, but they usually get a bit more efficient as well. There was th they certainly become more space efficient, so you can fit more stuff into things. But this is especially true of the um, water tanks and fuel tanks. Like, the small tank is a 3x3. Three three. You've got to have a, a, a gap around it, though, so it effectively takes up a 5x5 five five spot if you're trying to put other rooms nearby. But 5 kilowatts. But um, for 10 kilowatts, we can have a 4x4, four four, so one grid bigger, but it holds the same amount of space. It holds double. But it needs less maintenance, though, so only one technician. So there are various things that need to be considered. Slightly heavier, though, overall. But it doesn't need maintenance as often and requires much less, so yeah. There's different things you can try to do here. A small hangar provides 1,000 tons of cargo space for attack craft, drops it to drones. Um, right, okay, let's actually go for some efficient research. Now, the research tutorial told us that we could assign 2,000 is generally efficient. You don't get much more going beyond that. The number turns green. It turns yellow and the red, depending on how efficient the research is going to be. But it's still pretty efficient up to um, a fair bit. So, if you notice, 2,500 is yellow. 2,400 is starting to turn green. But 2,300 is actually pretty close. But if we say it's 2,200, it's still bright green. So, I think that's a slight boost to your speed. But it's only 10% more in terms of cost. So, you know, it's... I'm going to set 2,200 to research better fuel tanks, better water tanks. How do the air tanks look? 3x4 or 3x7? Ouch. Less maintenance. 35 tons. Less power requirement, though. So the air tanks, not as impressive, but this is basically cost going out per quarter to get upgrades to these various things rather than buying them up front. And it's not just... It actually gives you much better return in terms of your progress towards the total cost of the things. Because it researches one thing. The first thing in the list it researches pretty well. And then it also gives you some progress to, for things further in as well. Which helps. Um, that clearing contract required is a small generator. So I'll actually set that one going as well. But you're, you're also rolling. And I think we also need mining lasers, don't we? Actually, what about these... 5 kilowatts, slightly larger, requires more technicians. However, a larger cooling unit will require a cooling hatch as well. So let's actually go ahead and 
get this going well. We need some better tech to make better ships, make more money, make more dosh. It takes money to make money. Also, we need mining laser. I think. Get that. Do we need a bigger hole? I don't think we do. Not really. But as you see, there's also some more advanced things deeper in as well. Let's check the engines. It's an 8x16, slightly narrower, 7x16. Requires less power, less cooling, less fuel, less technicians. Ooh, this is a serious upgrade, actually. It costs slightly more to build it. But it's also lighter as well. And it's also slightly faster. Let's, do, let's, let's assign that to get research as well. So we've got a total budget of 17,600 megabit coins. Let's assign one more thing, actually. One more thing. One more thing for research. What else What else do we actually need for that uh, contract? The, um... No, it's not the deal with local pirates. It's the clear route. Okay. Let's check the list. We need shield generators and we need mining lasers. That's only, the only two techs we actually require those. Shield gens and mining lasers. Are we researching shields? We are. We're not, we're not researching armor. Three or three by four, which holds one pilot or three pilots. Mm. We're researching cargo, we're researching all that. You know what? Let's let's go ahead and research some armor. Basic armor is going to help in general survivability of a ship, no matter what. So we'll get all that sorted out. Actually, shall we do one more and start working on another ship class? We can get a bigger ship pretty easily actually. The first ships are only 10,000 for the various classes. But I think we're going to be okay actually so I guess we don't need it. It's just that some contracts actually specify which ship they require. Oops, I didn't mean to click on ship design. We're going to do that next time. Now, okay, galaxy map. Does clear route require a certain ship? It does not. They do not. Yeah. Okay, so we can do all this, assuming we can cram the relevant equipment into our tiny starting ship hull. But we're going to end it there, though, because, you know, we are at the 20-minute mark, so that is the time. So, this has been I Am Mark Three. Thank you all very much for watching. I hope you guys are enjoying the show so far, and this look at Starship Corporation. And I'll see you all some other time. Yes, indeed. Catch you later.